Hello everyone. It's great to see you again. Merry Christmas. Today I want to share with you one of my absolute favorite Christmas dinner menus. I'm serving a carrot ginger orange soup for the first course, a dazzling meatloaf wellington for the main course, and luxurious caramel chocolate mousse for the grand finale. You'll be glad to know that all of these recipes can be made ahead of time. This way, you can feel relaxed on Christmas Day. I think you will love this carrot ginger orange soup. It's super delicious, super healthy, and it's very inexpensive to make. Now, the first thing you need is two and a half pounds of carrots, and you want to trim them, of course, and peel them, and then just roughly chop them. Now, this recipe is in my cookbook, Kevin's Kitchen. Uh, but I will put a link to a recipe that you can print out in the description below. You will also need one large onion and you just peel it and roughly chop it. Now in a five quart Dutch oven or a large soup pot, add one tablespoon of butter and a tablespoon of olive oil and set this over medium heat. When the butter melts, add the onion, give them a toss, and then cover the pot and let the onions sweat until they are soft. It's going to take about six minutes and you want to do this over low heat. All right, my onions have softened. So now add two fat cloves of garlic or two teaspoons of garlic paste. Add the carrots, one teaspoon of salt, then add six cups or 1,420 mil of chicken stock. This is my own homemade chicken stock. I want you to see how gelatinous this is. Oh, this is beautiful stock. Bring this to a boil over high heat and then lower the heat, partially cover the pot, and let this simmer until the carrots are perfectly tender. That will take about 30 minutes. 30 minutes later, let's check the carrots. Ah, definitely tender. Let the soup cool briefly and then ladle it into the jar of a high-powered blender. Or you could use an immersion blender. Blend the soup to a smooth puree. Pour the puree into a cleaned out pot. I have a lot of puree still stuck in the blender, so I'm going to add a bit of water. Then I will turn on the blender again just to clean out the jar. And there we are. Now add the zest and juice of a large navel orange. So this soup is not only high in beta carotene, it's high in vitamin C. And I should tell you that this soup is delicious at any temperature, hot, warm, or even cold from the fridge. This is an old fashioned orange juicer the kind my great-grandmother would have used. Give this a stir. Then add one tablespoon of either freshly grated ginger or, much easier, one tablespoon of ginger paste. Flavor profile here is just amazing. Oh, I can smell that ginger. Now, let this orange goodness cool to room temperature, and then cover the pot, put it in the refrigerator. You can make this soup a good week ahead of time. And when it's time to serve, 
Just put it on the stove top, bring it to a simmer. Good morning. It's the next day and I'm getting ready to make the dessert for our dinner party. Now I'm making the dessert ahead of the main course simply because I want to put the dessert in the freezer. And the dessert is a wonderful caramel chocolate mousse. And the first thing you need is four large eggs and you want to separate the eggs. So you put the white in one bowl and the yolk in another bowl. And then I'm going to transfer the white to my mixing bowl. Now take six ounces or 173 grams of either bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate or a mixture of the two and roughly chop the chocolate. There, our prep work is done. Now let's move over to the stove top. In a medium saucepan set over medium heat, melt three tablespoons or 43 grams of butter. Salted or unsalted, the choice is yours. All right, my butter is melted, so now add a half cup or 100 grams of regular granulated sugar. Kind of spread the sugar evenly over the melted butter. And just let the sugar sit here without stirring until it starts to color. That will take about one minute. So the sugar is starting to take on some color. So now stir slowly and constantly until the sugar turns an amber shade. That's going to take two to three minutes. Just be patient here. All right, the sugar has turned a wonderful amber shade. So now stir in three quarters of a cup, that's 177 ml of heavy cream Actually, I want to whisk this in. And you want to whisk it in very gradually. This looks wonderful. Okay, now turn off the heat. Now off heat, I'm going to whisk in the chocolate and a quarter teaspoon of salt. You want to keep whisking until the chocolate melts and looks satiny. Look at how shiny this is. That's what I meant by satiny. Now transfer this gorgeous caramel chocolate mixture to a large bowl. And then we're going to let the mixture cool to, well, close to room temperature, about 15 minutes. All right, the caramel chocolate mixture has cooled for about 15 minutes. So now, take a spatula that has red snowflakes on it, add the egg yolks, and beat them in. And there we are. Now, beat the egg whites to stiff peaks. Let's have a look. Oh yeah, stiff peaks. Now, take about one third of the whites add them to the chocolate mixture, and then fold them in just to lighten the chocolate mixture. Now you'll notice that I did not add any sugar to the egg whites. That's because there's sugar in the caramel and there is sugar in the chocolate. I don't want this to be an overly sweet dessert. Go ahead and fold in the remaining egg whites. And when you fold, you want to Hold your spatula like this and then plunk it straight down and then turn the spatula to lift what is on the bottom of the bowl up to the top. This way you don't deflate the egg whites. Well, you deflate them a little, but you don't deflate them much. The main course is the meatloaf wellington which we are going to make in a bit. It's a very filling course, so it's good to have a very light dessert as the grand finale. When this has completely cooled, I'm going to cover it with cling film and then I'll pop it into the freezer. You could put it in the refrigerator if you like. <music> 
on to the main course. Now, I'm going to make a meatloaf wellington. This is similar to beef wellington, except it's much easier to do. It costs a fraction of the price of regular beef wellington, and it makes an excellent presentation as a main course. The first thing you need is two sheets of puff pastry. Now my sheets are nine by nine. I need to roll the first sheet into a 12 inch square. You wanna roll this out on a lightly floured surface. I'm using my pastry cloth here. All right, we're at 12 inches here. So now transfer this piece to a parchment lined baking sheet. Then take the other sheet of puff pastry, which of course is thawed, but still quite cold. And you want to cut a nine by five inch piece out of it there. And as before, put this piece on a parchment lined baking sheet. Put the other piece on the baking sheet too. We're going to use that to cut out little decorations for the meatloaf wellington. And put the puff pastry in the refrigerator. Now, dice up one medium sized onion. And I wanted to mention that this recipe is adapted from one by Chrissy Tiggin. Then take six ounces of mushrooms, stems removed per Chrissy Tiggin, and chop them very finely. Now, I will link Chrissy's recipe in the description below. Now, in a large skillet over medium heat, warm about two tablespoons of olive oil, add the onion, and saute them until they start to color. That's going to take, oh, five to six minutes. Our onions have some color on them, so now add the mushrooms. Looks like a lot of mushrooms, but they are going to cook down. Also add a half teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, and then saute the mushrooms until they become quite dry. That will take about five minutes. All right, the mushrooms have relieved themselves of their moisture. So now turn off the heat and let this cool for about 15 minutes. Meanwhile, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 204 degrees Celsius. Onto the meatloaf. So you need two large eggs. Just crack these into a large mixing bowl. Whisk. Then add six ounces of fresh breadcrumbs. That's about 171 grams. Now I'm using a mixture of homemade bread scraps. So I have whole wheat bread, and I think I even have one of my homemade hot dog buns ground up in here. I just grind the bread in the food processor. Stir to moisten the breadcrumbs with the eggs. Now add the mushroom mixture. The brown mushrooms and onions are going to give this meatloaf an incredibly deep flavor. Now add one and a half pounds of ground beef. Now Chrissy Tiggin said to use 80-20 ground beef, so that's 20% fat. I'm using half 80-20 and half 94-6. So I have high fat ground beef and low fat ground beef. I'm also going to add one cup, that's 120 grams of finely grated Parmesan cheese. Yum. And a tablespoon of garlic paste. Then add a very small amount of salt. I'm adding about a quarter teaspoon because I'm keeping in mind that the Parmesan cheese is already salty. And I'm going to add about a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. Roll up your sleeves and mix everything with your hands. All right, we're all mixed here. So now I want to form this loaf into 
a nine inch by five inch loaf. Need to go a little longer. I just washed my hands. I will be washing them again. We'll also be washing my ruler. Okay, we're perfect. Let me fetch the puff pastry. Here's the nine inch by five inch piece of puff pastry that we cut out earlier. And then I have six ounces uh, or 12 thin slices of prosciutto. And I'm going to use six slices to line the sides of the puff pastry. And you want the prosciutto half on and half off the pastry. I'll flip the pan and do the other side. Don't worry if the prosciutto tears, no one's going to see it. Put the meatloaf on top of the prosciutto line pastry and then pull the prosciutto up over the sides of the meatloaf like this. Take the remaining prosciutto and fix it at, to cover the ends like so, and then take the rest of the prosciutto and just place it on top. Now, I mangled some of my prosciutto while filming this video, and that's a-okay. I'm just going to throw the pieces on top and see we're completely covered here. We are encased in prosciutto. Now take the 12 by 12 piece of puff pastry that we rolled out and place it on a diagonal over the meatloaf. And then dampen your fingers, pull up the puff pastry and moisten the edge. The water will help to create a really tight seal. And then by hook or by crook, tuck the pastry under the meatloaf just to create a seal. Now beat an egg. Paint the puff pastry all over with the beaten egg. The egg is going to help the pastry to brown beautifully in the oven. Cut three steam vents in the top of the pastry. And then with the leftover pastry, you know, the scraps, you can make little designs, either cutting them out yourself or using little cookie cutters. Ideally, you want miniature cutters. I don't have miniature, so I'm using whatever I have. But here we have a little acorn. Here we have what I presume is an apple. Then attach the little cutouts to the meatloaf wellington. The egg wash will hold the cutouts in place. I'll put an acorn over here. And then brush the little cutouts with egg wash. Well, I think this looks festive. Now, you can put this in the oven right away or you can cover it loosely with cling film and then pop this into the refrigerator for an hour or two before baking it off. I'm going to bake mine right now. It's going into the preheated oven for 30 minutes and then I'm going to put a, an aluminum foil tent over it and reduce the oven temperature to 375 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 191 degrees Celsius. And I'll let it finish baking for probably another 30 minutes or until an internal temperature reaches 155 degrees Fahrenheit. this Christmas dinner party, I'm laying the table with a tan cloth and a white and tan table runner. The centerpiece 
is a garland that I made from greens in my garden. I will link my garden making tutorial in the description below. I'm decorating this centerpiece with holly and pine cones, which are also from my garden. I'm also adding Christmas crackers to the table. Christmas crackers are fun for both children and adults. And here is our beautiful meatloaf wellington. Now, I tested it with a digital meat thermometer and it has reached 155 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 68 degrees Celsius. That's the perfect temperature for a meatloaf. Now, I'm going to let this rest for 10 to 20 minutes so that the juices can recede. Meanwhile, I'm going to roast these cauliflower florets and these halved Brussels sprouts. I just drizzled them with olive oil and dusted them with salt and pepper. These will go in a 400 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 minutes. I like to garnish the first course soup with creme fraiche and minced parsley. I plate the soup in the kitchen and then bring it to table. Cut the meatloaf wellington into one inch slices. Look at this. Gorgeous. I'm serving the cauliflower and the Brussels sprouts along with the beef wellington. I'm serving the caramel chocolate mousse in dessert goblets garnished with a splash of cream, shavings of chocolate, and a crisp pirouette. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you will give these Christmas make-ahead recipes a try. And I really wish we could be together for Christmas. Again, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and to tap the little bell icon to receive notifications every time I upload a new video. I will see you next time. Bye for now.